The year was 1954. With their sturdy, broken-down microphones, they were headed for greatness in the American West. Jack and Ron in the morning. If you don't laugh like this, ah. you're probably going. The following entertainment special which contains mature subject matter. Parents may consider some of the program content unsuitable for children. Yeah. Parental discretion is advised. It's the bad boys of radio. Here's Jack and Ron. Hey, what's going on? It's Monday. So you know what's going on. The number one video podcast in America right here at Othello's Italian Restaurant in Edmond, Oklahoma. Got a second location down there in Norman if you're interested. Maybe you're down there on Campus Corner scratching your head going, I wonder what I'm going to eat today. Well, hey, they've got an Othello's oh right there. Oh, my God. <laughs> they have an Othello's right there on Campus Corner in Norman, uh, just as well as the one up here in Edmond. And the menu's the same. The food is great, very consistent, great people, and they allow us to come in here every Monday to the Othello's in Edmond and they totally smart. tear the place up. They're very smart. And you know what? Uh, <laughs> so, so helpful. You know, even the folks that walk by and, and they kind of salute us as they as they go by with fellows. I'm, I'm, I'm digging that. It's good stuff. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you know, we come to you live every Monday at 1 o'clock Central Time here from Othello's in Edmond. Uh, we're on Facebook. Uh, we're on the Jack and Ron Facebook page. We're also on the Jack and Ron YouTube page, which is the Jack and Ron Show, if you want to check us out on YouTube. Everything gets super loaded up on Wednesday with Spotify and iHeart and Google this and gobble that, and just we're we're YOLO everywhere, man. All I right. promise, we're all over the place. And of course, the entertainment you get is absolutely fantastic. For example, today, a little bit later on, we're going to look at Fart Day. Oh, that's what I said, Fart Day. Today's and, National Fart Day, and and you can participate. As a matter of fact, any and every day could be Fart Day if you play your cards right. All right, we'll tell you why and how in just a bit. Also, got to say hi to our good friends at Flash Holler. Flash Holler. We always say. Uber moves people, Flash Holler moves merchandise. They also now have become the game changer in the moving industry. If you've got seniors in your family or maybe an uncle, an aunt, a grandparent, maybe they're looking to downsize, move into one of those, you know, assisted living centers, one of those senior centers. They are connected. Flash Holler's totally integrated with all of them in the state of Oklahoma. So it doesn't matter which one it is. Maybe you're looking to move to Duncan or Ardmore or maybe Godibo. They have the senior centers, and the floor plan for each and every layout. And, uh, and they can work with you on that. And they pack it up, they move it, they sell whatever you don't want. It just It's an incredible stick. Check out flashhauler.com. They, 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 they'll pack it for you? <laughs> they'll pack it. And what, what about unpacking? And they'll unpack it. All right, I got all this furniture right now that I'm downsizing, moving in some place that I really can't afford, and it's really nice. I got all this, uh, the furniture's left over. What? Jack, for heaven's sakes, what happens? Well, they can go ahead and sell it for you, or they can donate it to other, uh -huh. uh, you know, nonprofits. They they can help you with all this stuff. So, Flash Holler, we'll tell you more about it as the show gets underway. But be sure to go to flashholler.com, F L A S H O L R dot com. All right, sounds good. Also, remember we got a website, uh, Jack and Ron dot com, Jack and Ron dot com, J A C K A N D R O N dot com. And we got a phone number for you to call, 405-509-5030. Have you called it? What the hell's wrong with you? You can call right now and talk to us. Yeah. Be live on the air with us. I mean, do you know how many people would love to have that opportunity to express oh, themselves? We're giving it to you right now. All you have to do is call 405-509-5030. That's all. Simple enough. All right. We got to get to two tough trivia to kick things off. Then we're going to do asinine trivia with Richard. And then we got a bunch of other crap to talk about. This is one of the most exciting, outstanding, and impressive video podcasts in the world, globally, coast to coast. And of course, the number one video podcast in America. And plus, uh, talk to Richard a little bit about uh, the eclipse. He left and drove down to actually check it out. We'll talk to him about that in just a little bit. But in the meantime, too tough trivia. Why? Why? I say, hey? is there a top 40 for songs? Why is there a top 40 for songs? How many times do you hear that? It is an American top 40. It is top 40. Why is there a top 40 
Like, That's a really good question. I've never even pondered that. Yeah, I've never like, thought why about is it. it. Like a top forty, not like top fifty or yeah, top or top one hundred or whatever. Why is there a top forty? You know, because so, yeah, I remember yeah, for years point. and years, Casey Kasem, you know, was like, yeah. and that will we count him down from number forty all the way up That's to number one. Right. So you actually have the answer to that? Yes, I have. Wow. <laughs> I can't I, wait to I find just out. That out. I, that's why I throw it in. No, I've, I've got it. I've got the answer. And and once I give you the answer, the first thing you're going to say is, oh, that makes sense. All right. <laughs> We're going to find out the answer at the end of this podcast about 55 minutes from right now. Hi. Uh, we got to say hi to William Wedge who's hey, checking us out. William, He's, can I call you Bill? Yeah, sure. Okay. Why not? <laughs> can I call you Bill? Can I call you Willie? Can I call you? Hey, buddy. Uh, William Wedge says, hey, Jack and Ron, how you guys doing? Doing good. Thanks for joining us on the podcast. Be sure to share this podcast with everybody you know. Share the podcast with everybody you know so that they, too, can participate and be a part of this whole little thing we call the Jack and Ron Go Round. Mm. Yeah, feel free. Uh, okay, we've got uh, two tough trivia out of the way. Now we got to get to uh, asinine trivia, right? Oh, and by the way, I'm going to give you a quick little explanation for those people who might be new to the podcast and wonder where we ever came up with this asinine trivia, quick explanation for it. You know, when we were working at 98.9 KISS FM, uh -huh. the radio station, taking that station, by the way, from worst to first and bringing in top ratings in the, uh, you know, entire company nationwide, which we did uh, out of their 560 stations, Jack and Ron were number one, number one show in the entire company. Uh, anyway, the radio salespeople would come to Jack and Ron with a prize they wanted to show, uh, or I should say showcase uh, on our show. I take issue with the word prize. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> an item. <laughs> they'd come to us with an item. They wanted to showcase on our number one rated show, and they'd say, guys, this has to be huge, huge. You need to come up with a great contest to make the client happy. After all, after all, my client's providing this outstanding prize. Well, then we'd find out the prize was something Oh, like a 5% discount coupon on a six-pack of Dr. Pepper. Yeah, big prize. Or, or maybe an autographed picture of Bob Stoops' dog. Uh, or <laughs> even a prize like a Kit Kat candy bar with an expiration date six months Yummy. old. So thus, we came up with a contest to match the piss-poor prize that they would provide. And we call it Asinine Trivia, and we hit Richard with the questions. Are you ready, Richard? Yes, sir. <laughs> All righty. Question one, what do you think when I say H2O? Water. Very good. Question two, what type of product? What type of product is Anheuser-Busch best known for? Beer. You got it. Light beer, just plain old beer. Uh, beer, beer, yeah, they got enough of them. <laughs> I had a push in a while. Question three, final question for Richard. Name the two guys who've won more broadcast awards than any other broadcasters in Oklahoma, uh -huh. including the recent 2023 National Broadcast Award for the Radio's Got Talent nationwide competition against over a thousand other broadcasters. And we won. Oh, and who also enjoy simply soaking their toes in hot barbecue sauce while mm. sipping on a mint julep, watching the Kentucky Derby in the nude during a total solar eclipse, and who also perform the number one video podcast in America. It's tough, I know, Richard, but I know you can bring it home. Check it out. You got it. Good job, Richard. Good job. Damn. Hot barbecue sauce. I guess that's a thing. Doesn't that sound good? Sound really good. It depends. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, before we, went, before we went on, Ron was talking about Maybe grabbing a, 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 what do you call it, a wrap over there at Sonic. And I see Sonic's got some wraps for like a buck ninety nine or yeah. something. Are they pretty good? I uh, have not had one. Nor have I. Yeah. Well, I, I got to tell you my story. I go to Subway the other day, and they've got these new wraps. And one of them is like a honey mustard chicken something or another. So I said to the guy, I think I'll try the new wrap. And I said, but I want rotisserie chicken. And it comes with rotisserie chicken. So he lays it out, and he says, you want cheese? Yeah, provolone. Okay. I look, I said, is that rotisserie chicken? Because in the past, I've ordered rotisserie chicken at Subway, and it's just kind of shredded chicken. Well, this didn't look like, anyway, so he does the whole thing, and I look, and he, he and then here's the killer. It's smaller than the old wraps. Remember, they had those big wraps. They're smaller. Eleven ninety nine with tax, $12.98. One wrap. No drink, no chips. I mean, I don't, I don't bitch much about price, but I'm like, Dude, it's Subway, not mahogany. Yeah. Okay, so then I get it home, and it tastes a little funny to me. And then I realize, I'm thinking, is this tuna or is this? So I call him. He's no, it's not tuna. I said, well, how come it doesn't look like the chicken? He said, oh, we now mix the chicken with 
mayonnaise. And so it's all stirred up and uh, mushed up. I said, oh, well, no wonder it looked different. Like a chicken and, salad? Yeah, kind of like a chicken oh, salad. Chicken salad sandwich? That's yeah. not rotisserie chicken. I know. Chicken I, that's whatsoever. what I said. I don't know. Anyway. I just, you know, how, how, how quickly did you get back in your car and drive right back up? The I didn't bother. I'm face. too lazy to do all that, you know. Anyway, uh, Christopher Unruh says, I won tickets to the Omnidome. Okay. I think in S&I yeah. trivia, I think that's when you put it in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he had won tickets to the Omnidome. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And John Bennett's watching and he says, woohoo. All right. Way to go, guys. Yeah. Uh, all right. Now, talking about guys now, our producer <laughs> had an opportunity and he took it. Yeah. To go and check out the big eclipse last week. And, uh, you know, I was, with so much publicity about it, a lot of it, them talking about, well, it's going to be crowded. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. We feared for you. Oh, thank you. I, I feared for myself. And, I, I, my trunk was packed. Although you made the smart move not to go to Ida Bell, which is sort of. Uh, yeah, I was about to. If I, I had to get stranded, I did not want anybody trying to rescue me in not, Ida Bell. Not Ida Bell. I'm here. No, don't you come down here. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't you come down here. I'll I'll find a way back. At any rate, uh, how did that how did they go in the, the clip picture? I saw uh a photograph. Yeah, it was yeah. good. Uh we, we got out. Thank you guys for wanting to compromise and you know, record early that day and uh whatnot. Uh we got out just in time. Uh by the time we got down there, we had to make a couple of adjustments because of we was on a time schedule. Uh we got there in Louisville. They had an event downtown. We drove past it. They had downtown shut off, as like they would do here in Edmond. We circled back, pulled over at a, a church parking lot, got out. We was there for like maybe five minutes, and then wow. boom, it got dark. Uh, you could start seeing the planets pop out. You could start seeing the stars, uh, which was yeah. kind of trippy. That's cool. And then, uh, you know, the horizon around you looked like the sun was coming up. So right. it was, was kind of a bizarre trip. And then all of a sudden, boom. Sun, the light, someone turned the light back on. Dang, and all right. of a sudden, everything was good. Huh? Yeah, then we, looked, uh, we went to Hutchings. <laughs> Hutchings Barbecue. Hutchings Barbecue. That's what it's called. Where is that, in Texas? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's in between Carrollville or Carroll, Carrollton and right. Louisville. It was good. Their good bar- stuff. Their barbecue compared to our Oklahoma barbecue. I was, I, it was good. It Impressive, was good. yeah. Impressive. It was to the point where you I was know, like, next time I come down here, I do want to stop by. Well. Yeah, it was good. It was all. Well, there are different places. The sides were off the... The sides were okay. Well, I'm not really a heavy side person. You can get the meats right. You're happy with your meat. I just won't buy your sides. Yeah. <laughs> Eric get Wagner. Chip. Yeah, give it back. Give it back. Chips. <laughs> Eric Wagner's online and he says, hello, Jack and Ron. Sure miss you guys in the morning. Yeah. I can't tell you how many times a week I hear that from people. Oh, yeah. Same, same thing, All man. the time. And we, we, we miss doing it. I don't miss getting up at 4 a.m. every day, but I do miss doing that daily show. Uh, we provided so much. I, I thought we really, uh, you know, did a lot of digging, a lot of research, and uh, you know, it's combing uh, every every nook and cranny of the media and uh, every other source. We laid it out yeah. on the mic every single yeah. day, and a lot of times it meant getting our ass in a in a ringer with management. But we still did it for who? For you, for the yeah. people, for That's the right. people, and, and you know, and really, there were times where we get ourselves in a little bit of a quandary with management well let's see they have to understand you know they look they're in a in a i don't know a a glass or brick wall box room we deal with the real people yeah they're in the going on out here and then we go ahead and reflect what our listeners and in this case viewers want to hear we want to know about and all of a sudden we got into i can't tell you how many times i was stopped in the hall oh yeah what did it I won't tell you some of the things that were asked. There are a number of times we were called in by management and got our ass reamed, you know, for different things we did. But overall, I think, you know, because we did generate the top rated station in the chain. And the the, check cleared. Yeah. And and all the revenue was there for management, you know, and they get the overrides. They get the salespeople are getting their big, hefty commissions and management gets overrides on that. And so does the corporate level. And, And so when they filed bankruptcy, and then decided to lay off Jack and Ron. That was like the end of an era for Cumulus Media. Yep. It pretty much destroyed them on a lo- local level. Yeah. And it's really too bad. And uh, unfortunately for some people, it put a lot of attention on those individuals that sought, did not achieve, but sought to replace us. Yeah. And, uh, and all I ever hear is, you know, they haven't been able to replace you guys yet. 
And I say, well, they never will. I'm, you know, I'm no brag, just fact. All right. Something I looked at today. I just realized it's April 15th, doggone it. It's tax day. Don't you hate the freaking IRS? Don't you, don't you wonder like when you every month and every week see that paycheck depleted by the taxes you're paying them over and over. And then at the end of the year, mm. oh, by the way, you underpaid. Now you owe us another yeah. five or oh, 10 like, grand. Who's FICA? Yeah. Who's somebody FICA? Somebody, yeah. Am I supposed to be, are they supposed to be getting my money? And then you end up having to pay another five, 10 grand, whatever yeah. it might be. And you go, where is this money going? Why am I even working? Uh, it. All the money I'm taking in, it seems like 40 to 50% of it's going back to them for what? Uh, it's not like they've improved the roads. It's not like everything's just hunky dory. What are they doing with that money? We don't know. We just deal with it. But now, on the good side, there are some people out there helping you, me, and everybody else on tax day. For instance, Krispy Kreme. They're doing a deal right now, today and today only. You buy a dozen donuts, and then the second dozen is only the sales tax. So, like if the sales tax on a dozen donuts is a buck fifty or whatever it might be. That's all you pay for your second dozen. How about this? Grubhub has a $15 off deal today. BJ's Brew House, restaurant and brew house, they got a $10.40 deal. $10 off any $40 purchase. How about that? Huh. Uh, Dave and Buster's has a 50% off all food from today till April 28th. That's pretty good. And uh, White Castle, which we don't have, but White Castle has 15% off for April 15th if you use the code and they give you a WC15OFF. Uh, their competitor, Crystal, which we also don't have, don't have, has a buy one, get one slider deal with a code yeah. as well. Uh, if you want White Castle here, you have to go to, to Walmart and go to the, the, uh, frozen, the food. frozen food section. They're never the same. Slide, yeah. They're never the same. When you go to White Castle, when I'm on my travels from here to Cincinnati or Chicago or wherever, there's White Castles everywhere. And here's the question, and maybe you guys can answer this for me. Bum, bum, bum. White Castle was created in Wichita, Kansas, two hours north of us. Now, why wouldn't we have a White Castle? That's where it was originated. That's where the founder, the guy who discovered, I watched this on the History Channel and the whole making of White Castle. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, if it was created in Wichita, just two hours north of us, why are all the White Castles in Missouri and Illinois, Indiana, Ohio? Either because whoever was doing all of that wasn't smart enough to expand in this direction or... There could have been some corporate or other type hurdles they had to jump over in order to come to Oklahoma. It, it all depends. I I would I think it'd be easy saying. to come here, but but yeah, you, I, I, let me tell you, you've seen our legislature. The oh, whole <laughs> okay. I mean, you want to come problem in? solved. Okay, Game over. We this. All right, we need a percentage of that. Well, we need yeah. to, and then say, well, I tell you what. Well, let, let me let me go on a little bit further east. Yeah. Well, here here here's the. Uh, the thing is, they always said, well, White Castle will never be any east of the Missi or west of the Mississippi, although it was created in Wichita. And now most of them, like I said, are in Ohio and Illinois and so forth. But yet they've got like two or three now in Phoenix because, you know, Phoenix is considered Chicago's largest, most distant suburb. And people in Chicago love their White Castle. So now they got White Castles there. And they also have a place called Portillo's, which is a big Chicago chain for Italian beef sandwiches and Chicago dogs and all that. They got Portillo's in Phoenix and they've got Lou Malnati's pizza in Phoenix. And I'm like, why are they getting all this Chicago stuff there? Um, and I don't know if any of those would go over here in Oklahoma. I would assume because people do go out. You know, a lot. good food is, is good, good food. food. Yeah. yeah. But I, I'm just like, I've always been stunned by the fact that White Castle created two hours north of us in Wichita, Kansas, and we don't have one. All right. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. If, <laughs> if we did, and we don't, but if we did, <laughs> uh -huh. you, you know, a nice little walk will make you a participant in Fart Day. Tell me about it. Is today National Fart Day? or is This it? is National Fart Day. Right Thank here, right? God. And basically, it's a health question. We are not getting as much fiber as we used to get, you know, with, with uh, food that you can, you know, fast food and stuff like that. We're not getting the the fiber that maybe we got when. Uh, uh, re remember when our, our our wives used to cook? Yep. Yeah. Okay. No more. <laughs> uh, remember <laughs> living at home and all that. You know, you it, you get some stuff. Maybe even you grew outside. It was lots of lots of fiber. And one doctor says one way to go ahead and get our bodies moving again 
because most of the time we're sitting around, you know, uh, waiting on dinner. Then we get up, go eat, and we sit our butts back down in that chair. Get up and walk from five to 10 minutes, not miles, five to 10 minutes. And when you get done, walk back, and you, you should be expelling uh, some gas or something. For God, I can't wait. Mm. And they call it fart day. But it's after you've eaten. You yes, go after, ahead and you do a walk. Something after you've eaten. All right, very and, good. And in order to get everything moving, because, you know, you're sitting there, then you go eat, then you go back and sit. You know, your body's not moving that stuff mm-hmm. around like it should. Yeah. Where you could have a, a healthy exchange. I'll tell you what I think is fairly healthy, and I don't, you know, know if anybody else wants to su- subscribe to this idea or concept, but every morning I get up, I have like one half cup of Cheerios with a little almond milk. And I think Cheerios supposedly are good for your cholesterol yeah. level and help with, you know, prevention fiber. of heart disease and fiber and all that. Yeah. See, and I love Cheerios. See, I, Cheerios are okay, although coming up, I leaned a little bit more towards Wheaties. Oh, I, I found uh, Wheaties to be a little too fiberish. In other words, I'd eat Wheaties, and the next thing you know, I'm running to the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Hey, celebrating fart day early. <laughs> but that, that's one of the, I had to ease up off of that a little bit because with Wheaties, you eat it right then and there about mm-hmm. the time you get oh, out. Yeah, man. It's all By the time mush. you sit to the table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's all mush. So, so it's like Wheaties. All right. Hit, there you go. Man, let me eat it right now. Throw a banana off in there, would you? Oh, and I got something else I want to throw out here real quick before we get to some audio. I thought this was interesting. An airline passenger flying on United was at the ticketing counter, Newark, New Jersey, and the agent said their bag was a little too heavy by about half a pound. So then the agent said, hey, look, don't worry about it. I don't see a thing, and gave the guy a high five. And then the guy said, "Uh, you know, by the way, you can leave a tip right there on the counter. In other words, the ticket agent is asking wow. for a tip to let you let your bag slide being a half pound over the limit. Oh, it's just aggressive. Be- everybody here. begging for tips, man, begging for the money. Unbelievable. Now, how much was it going to cost him? It, you know, if, he if ended he up did, leave, he, he left. He, yeah. he left a five dollar tip. And I think if you go over and if you have an additional bag, yeah. it might be fifty bucks. So okay, he got away pretty good. I thought that's a good. Yeah. That's a good business transaction. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Save hey, a I, little, little cash. I got one last thing I'll mention. I've got tons of other stuff, but I thought this was pretty interesting. You know, Valerie Bertinelli is part of the Food Network and has been for a while. But she said it's sad what's happened to the Food Network or former her former employer because yeah. I guess she's no longer there. She said. I fell in love with Food Network two decades ago because of all the amazing in-the-kitchen shows and how much she learned about cooking and so forth. She said it's sad about cooking because they don't do any of that anymore. It's just all competition shows. Mm. And I kind of like some of them. I kind of once in a while I watch Beat Bobby Flay. Kind of interesting. But when all the chopped them in, all of a sudden all of them are competition shows. I'm a little bored with that. I do still like Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. He goes to various restaurants around the country. And if I think, oh, I'm going to be in that city next year or next month, I think I'll stop in and try that place. But otherwise, I'm, I'm really tired of the competition shows. And I, the, you know, the other one I do <laughs> on the cooking channel, there's one, uh, Barbecue Pitmasters. It can get kind of interesting, but again, it's all competition. And I think I find that one interesting because this guy, David, with Butcher Barbecue in uh, Luther or Wellston, he wins all the time, and he's won numerous awards on Barbecue Pitmasters. And I think, God, I need to get out to Wellston. I have not been there in a long time. I got to get out there and try his barbecue again. You know what? One of these days, one of these Mondays, or whatever the case may be, even check with Richard, make sure he's got the time. How far is Wellston for me? Ah, uh, fifteen twenty minutes. Hey, oh, that's it. Let's take a yeah. drive. That's not far. Yeah, let's let's take a drive. Let them know that we're we support we're coming. them. Yeah, 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 and. Uh, and as supporting them, they should support us and, you know, no. let us eat free. But <laughs> well, and I was going to mention, too, that the uh, uh, speaking of places, you know, east of here, I went to uh, another couple, my wife and I, another couple went out to uh, Chicken Shack the other night out there. in uh, it's it says Arcadia on the deal. It used to be Arcadia, but they're now in Luther. That's Luther? Yeah, it's a Luther. It's Luther Arcadia. Oh. It's a, like right on top of each other. <laughs> Have you been to Chicken Shack? I haven't been there. I've driven past it before. You know, and you go out there and you pull in the parking lot and you go, oh my God, there's a million cars here, which there are. The place is so enormous, especially now that the weather's warming up. 
So we sat outside at the picnic table in the back. And I don't know how many acres. The guy named Ed used to play football for Iowa is the owner of the place and talked to him again the other night. And it's really good. I think you had it one time when we did Cliff Davis's show. They brought some yeah. chicken up. Yeah. Their chicken's really good. Anyway, I mean, because I'm a big Aishans fan and I like uh, Florence's chicken over at uh, Florence's place over at, thir- what is she at 36? 23rd. 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 Yeah. Yeah. I like her. But Chicken Shack's yeah. fun because they got a band out there. Usually they have a band inside and one outside. And so we went out there and had a great time. Check that Bobo's. I haven't been to Bobo's in a long time. Oh, come on, I love Bobo's. Yeah. Need to go. It's been a while since my stomach <laughs> wanted to do, do some Bobo's. Oh, yeah, because yeah, it's, I'll tell you, I, it, you talk about ladies on 23rd as well. And let me tell you, you talk about a line. You get out and you stand. Yeah. And I, I don't eat Bobo's in the winter. I know, standing out there in that cold. But I'll tell you what, what's really interesting about Bobo's, because are they still over there at 23rd and ML King? Uh, uh, you're a little bit more kind of. Yeah, it's this. It's yeah. It, it's ports, it's uh, well, east of Lottie. The times I've the been there, it's like the ten or eleven at night. And yeah. what's interesting is you'll see a couple guys in suit and ties, a couple guys with their baseball caps on backwards, a couple ladies. It's like what a potpourri of people. Yeah. yeah. See, that's yeah. that's the part. I see. Good food brings good, good people. people together. Yeah. And uh, you're absolutely right. You'll see somebody from every walk of life. It would seem uh, waiting in line. To get a uh, four pack or a ten pack, yeah, uh, uh, and now you can oh, you can get some shrimp or uh, catfish there, and uh, the fries and the oh man, it's really good. But the only thing I'm trying to think is it eight o'clock or ten o'clock that they open? And they, I think it's around nine. Yeah, well, I but you and what, then they're open to like the chicken runs out or whatever. It's like two a.m. or something. Yeah, you can still go there at three or four in the morning. <laughs> Now, that's, what a great place. There's one place that I have, uh, I, I've seen, but I have not tried. And that's Dave's Hot Chicken. I haven't tried that's that right either. Down the street. This one right now. There's the one in Bricktown, too, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know. I know there's one like on uh, Call Train and uh, uh, Second Ch- Street. That Chisholm deal? No, there's one like right down the street up here. Cold oh, Train and well, Second? There's Eddie. The was, I was looking at the one that looked at back towards, uh, Chis- come back towards this way. Come back be- really? by Bryant. It's right in between Bryant and Cold Train on Second Street. Really? Have yeah. you had any? Uh, my wife asked. She said she likes it. Good. Okay. Well, she they, says it's okay. They got one in, the, in that little Chisholm area where they have all the restaurants and stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's one. And when you're, you're driving down. You know, but there's Chisholm you Creek. See it. Yeah. I didn't know there was yeah. one in there. Uh, and wow. you'll see the big sign. Dave's Hot Chicken. There's a hot chicken. Yeah, 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 baby. But, you know, one of these days, <laughs> we'll need to uh, go ahead and get some competition started. Uh, we'll see uh, out from Aishans to... To, to Wellston, to whatever. We want to taste your chicken. We yeah. Your I, I will admit I do love Aishans. That's yeah. a pretty damn good bird. Oh, we got some people chicken. checking us out today. William Cummings is there. Uh, in fact, William says Dave's is overrated and overpriced. Uh, oh, really? That's what he says. Uh, all right. Yeah, he said, I tried their hot sauce that you need to sign a waiver for. Mm-hmm. And it was barely as spicy as Mad Dog. Okay. Uh, don't, don't they know that they're in Oklahoma? Yeah. We. We can we can take we it. can handle it. Yeah, Cyrus Smith is watching too. Thank you, Cyrus. Appreciate it. Hey, you guys, would you share this with everybody you know, all your friends and what have you? Yeah, just push the share button. There you go. Simple enough. Okay, we got some audio to get to. Holy cow, we have really eaten up the clock, haven't we? We got to move, move, move. And it with chicken. <laughs> <laughs> a grandma, a grandma in Ohio is fighting the city of East Cleveland after a traffic camera gave her a speeding ticket. Gave her a speeding ticket. While her broken down van was on the back of a tow truck, mm. here she is. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Here. Apparently, the tow truck was breaking the speed. speed limit. Her van's on the tow truck. Anyhow, here she is, Joanne Gibson, talking about her ticket. Maybe the tow truck driver was over the speed limit. The car was being towed. Uh, uh, it's kind of unreal. But listen to this poor lady trying to explain what happened. Kind of angry about it. When I get kind of angry, I want to find out what's really going on. What are they doing? I'm at the center getting this ticket, and my car is on a flatbed. I'm not driving that truck. I don't want anything on my driving license. So far, I have a good record, and I'm going to try and keep it that way. Poor lady. She's probably never had a ticket in her life. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, you know. I can see that happening. Yeah, well, back in the day, and when I say in the day, I don't mean the good day. Uh, my old man, we were talking, they were headed east, 
on uh, I-40. And they got a, they got a, the guy got a ticket for reckless driving. And because he supposedly changed, like, it was some crazy. Anyway, he got a ticket for reckless riding. And I'm sitting, reckless riding, reckless riding, even I though he had nothing you. to do with the driving of the he's, vehicle, he's sitting in the seat, you know, just a, a passenger, reckless driving, reckless riding. I, I said, mm. I thought he was pulling my leg at first, but no, he wasn't. Yeah, Never heard of that okay. one. All but, right. But you have to understand where they were and uh, yeah. where they were going. <laughs> where were they again? What did you say? You say it was a good old day. Yeah, it was a, it was a good old. Yeah, I didn't say for us, but it was just a good old <laughs> It was the old days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got to take a quick break. We're going to take a commercial break, come back. We've got a whole bunch of stuff to cover. We've got news of the I'll Be Damned, sleazy, trashy showbiz report. We've got so much coming coming up and all kinds of things, including uh, Tribon. Oh, yeah, we got Tribon and the dumbass joke of the day. Hang mm. on. We'll be back in just a flash. Your backup is cloud-based. That's all on the cloud nowadays. That's funny. But do you guys have the wings? Winger, Jack. Winger. Winger. Hey, they had a couple of big hits back in the 80s, remember? Winger, big hair. Great wings don't just fall from the sky. They come from Louie's, where we're preparing food fresh daily. Come try one of our great new sandwiches or wings with any of seven delicious sauces. Louie's, we're in your neighborhood. We've got this down to a science. Over. Yeah, we're just not up here winging it. Hey, Al, I thought we were meeting at Othello's. Hey, Jack, I am at Othello's. Well, I'm looking around, and I don't see you. Oh, wait, are you at Othello's in Edmond? No, I'm at Othello's in Campus Corner in Norman. Oh, great. Well, fortunately, both Othello's have great Italian food. They sure do, and I'm having the baked Z. Ooh, I'm having chicken marsala. Let's continue with the meeting. Yeah, sure thing, over the phone, but I need one thing. What's that? Uh, your credit card number, because you're buying. Othello's Italian Restaurant on Campus Corner in Norman and in downtown Edmond. You bought it online, and now you need to haul that big couch. Flash hauler it. Bought a washer or dryer and need to transport it from the seller's location to yours? Flash hauler it. Have office furniture to move across town? Flash hauler it. Car breakdown and you need a tow? Flash hauler it. Anytime you need furniture or appliances moved or need a tow, flash hauler it. Haul it, tow it, deliver it with Flash Hauler. Download the Flash Hauler app free. Do it now. Flash hauler. Man, they are the game changers in the moving industry. I promise I'm not making this stuff up. They have done incredible things since their inception, and they've been with us since they first started, which is about four years ago, maybe. The yeah. good old days. Yeah. yeah, the good old days. Anyway, Flash Holler, they are the game changers in the moving industry. They've integrated with all of the senior citizen centers in Oklahoma, and I don't mean just one, two, 10, 15, all of really? them. Every one of them. Look at you. Yeah, so... Here's the deal. If you've got a senior in your family wanting to downsize, move into an assisted living or a senior citizen center, um, you know, or maybe they don't have to do the maintenance on the yard. They got a pool and a recreational center and camaraderie with all the fellowship. Uh, well, anyway, they have the actual floor plans from every single one of those senior centers and they can help you make the move. What do they do, Ron? They'll pack, they'll unpack. What uh -huh. else? Well, Look, just let them do the heavy work for you. Perfect. Wh whatever that involves, they've got your back. Simple enough. Flash holler. Let me give you the website. And you need to check it out and tell everybody you know about them. Because not only do they work on the senior center and senior citizen moves, they move everything. If you buy something at a big box store, washer, dryer, sofa, whatever, they'll move it for you for a better price than most people. And they get it done quick. They've got drivers and trucks. All over the state. Storage. Storage. They do that too. Flash Holler, F L A S H O L R dot com. Flash Holler, F L A S H O L R dot com. Check it out. Question that, for you. Oh, I was going to say hi to Joseph Vatter. Joe Vatter, how are you? But that's my uh, my cousin's son. Um, so you're cousin. out in Florida, I believe. He's still in Florida. Yeah. So he's but your he, cousin too. He'd be my second cousin, right? Yeah. Okay. That's the way that works. I, oh, I'll, I'll, he claims you like you're trying to claim him. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Well, hey, he's watching. Thanks, Joseph. Appreciate it, Joe. I had a question for you. You know, I said, well, look at here. Oh, all right, well. all right. Were you offended by that? Never. Never was. Were you offended by that? No. Okay. I, it, it came to me a while after I said it. There was one station I'm not going to mention, which one. And I said that on the air. Well, look at here. And 
the yes. PD came in. And, like, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. And so, well, why? What was the? Well, it it it, it makes as, as you sound too ethnic. I said, well, oh. look at here. I said, that's that's a slang that you can get. In other words, anybody. According to him, you know, you're not saying without saying it was too words. ethnic. It was too black. Yeah. So yeah. You're not saying an extra word. So go after that. Look at here. <laughs> hey, I've said it. I used that. I would always, you know, look at here. You know, it's just a common. It was weird. I said, you know what? People in Oklahoma say that. Yeah. And what? what well, you just. They also say, y'all. Hey, y'all, what you do? You yeah. know, very common. You know, these things. But uh, anyway, that was one of the. Good old day, uh, <laughs> one of the good old day memories that I had. Thank you very much. You know who you are. There you go. All right, we got to get to the email because we get a bunch of questions and we try to come up with answers for people who are in trouble, people who have crisis. You know, they maybe don't know what style of clothes to wear, so they ask us. Uh, maybe they're trying to figure out, you know, just the difference between what their kids are like today and why they're different than they yeah. were 10 years ago. And should you continue taking all that you're taking from that particular person or should you divorce them? There you go. All right. Well, let's see. Here we go. Dear Jack and Ron, uh -huh. by the way, this was extremely long. I had to cut it down. Mm. So here we go. Wow. My daughter is turning into a little tramp. Hey! She, <laughs> she, she sneaks out late at night Yeah, and was dating a man 10 years old. Older than she is. Hot dog. I'm afraid she's going to get pregnant or, or get into uh, a situation that she can't get out of. Uh-uh. Oh, by the way, she is 15, but looks a lot older. Mm. What do you suggest I do for this would-be whore? Wow. <laughs> would-be whore. I love that. It's nice a way to talk about your daughter. Well, you know, I think it's nice for parents to see their kids as they really are, yep. not as they'd like them to be. That's a good idea. Yeah. What do you do with a little tramp like that? Well, obviously, <laughs> you as a parent yeah. should have started long ago keeping her from exposure. Yeah, being exposed to a, a man 10 years older than her. Yeah, they are dating her. Yeah. I mean, I understand they sneak out, but hey, there are ways. You know, there's alarm Lock that systems. Window. Yeah. Lock that window if at all possible. But now it's too late. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. game is over. Where are you going? I'm going to the what season? I'm going to the basketball game. Yeah, and then so, so there's a mixer after the basketball game, and I'm going with Barbara, and uh, she's bringing me back. Okay, well your your evening is just laid out. You know what? You have to be smarter than your kid, and then after that, uh, if that doesn't seem to work, you gotta you gotta bully your child. Let them yeah. know that you mean what you say, and tell her to keep her legs close. <laughs> Too late. I mean, that's all there is to it. I mean, you, it, it's your kid. They're she's wild. 15. They're she's, not, yeah, she's not 18 or 20 or what. 15. Now, I will you say have this. total authority over her. I, now, I have seen some of these uh, young ladies. There's too much growth hormone uh, that Chick fil A. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I've seen I've young seen, girls too who yeah, all of a sudden you yeah. think they're 20 years old. Yeah. And they end up being 16 or something. And that it just, is correct. It happens. You yeah, know, some people blossom early. Yeah. Ask Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lee Lewis. Jerry Lee Lewis. He married his second cousin, right? 13 years old. Damn. That's before Chick-fil-A had. Yeah. <laughs> Girl, and, 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 and here's the deal. Jerry Lee Lewis <laughs> marrying his 13-year-old cousin, if he was in any other state except South, he'd be in jail. Yeah. I think he was but, Tennessee, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, yeah they were completely but, fine. I think his career went down the tube. It when did. He, when he, uh, took, he took a lot of he took a lot of heat. Yeah. He went over to England and boy, and they, like, you do what? Yeah, they were just all up in arms. We got to say hi to James Double Bubble for you. James Heffron, who's uh, checking us out today. James has been a follower for years and years. Thank you, James. Brian Maxey is also online. Share this podcast with everybody you know. We have, uh, let's see here, Roy, Roy, the movie guy. I think this is Roy. Uh, he labeled see. it differently, sir. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what we're about to hear. <laughs> let's see what Roy has to say about the movies this week. Roy, the movie guy. Coming in number five this past weekend was Dune Part Two with four point three million dollars, Kung Fu Panda Four with five point five million dollars, Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire with five point eight million dollars. 
Godzilla X Kong, the new empire, which was number one for the past two weeks, drops to number two with $15.5 million. And your new number one movie is Civil War with $25.7 million. Now let's talk about what's opening up this weekend at the box office. We have two new titles. The first one is The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, starring Henry Cavill, Alan Richson, Henry Golding, Carrie Elwes, Alex Pettifer, and Isa Gonzalez. Based in part on real historical events, the film's storyline is about Special Operations Executive, a covert British World War II organization formed in 1940 at instigation of Prime Minister Winston Churchill for conducting espionage and sabotage in Nazi-occupied Europe. SOE operations contributed significantly to the Allied victory over Nazi Germany and were forerunners of modern-day black operations and irregular warfare. Rated R with a runtime of two hours. Up next, we have Abigail, starring Giancarlo Esposito, Dan Stevens, Kevin Durad, Catherine Newton, Melissa Barrera, and Angus Cloud. A group of would-be criminals kidnaps the 12-year-old daughter of a powerful underworld figure. Holding her for ransom in an isolated mansion, their plan starts to unravel when they discover their young captive is actually a bloodthirsty vampire. Rated R with a runtime of 1 hour and 49 minutes long. And that's a look at what's opening up this weekend at the box office. Back to you guys in the studio. I noticed that Kung Fu Panda 4 is still hanging in there. Yeah, you know what? It's in the top five. I, I have access to it. I need to watch that because mm -hmm. you're right. It's been there a long time. It really it has. animated. Now, I had a chance to see uh, Civil, I, I, War. Yeah, Civil, Civil War. War. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because the name implies things that are, are hinted at today. But uh, it, it and it, and it's it's you know it's kind of bloody, it's real bloody. Anyway, is it, it too bloody? Like no, I don't think it's too bloody. But, but sometimes they go like over the. Oh oh yeah, like it, you shoot the guy and you see his head split open. It's, it's nothing like. I'm that all about that. I but, love it. Too. Yeah. I love that. But it's <laughs> you know I suggest you go see this movie with an open mind. You, some people have some preconceived ideas as to what it might be, and you are probably wrong. But uh, go ahead and, and check it out. But I've, I've got to check it out. I had a chance to see Dune 2. Pretty good. Uh, it was it pretty up good. to the hype or is it too hypey? Uh, it, it was okay. I didn't like the ending. I didn't yeah. like the ending at all because they're setting it up for Dune 3. So, you know, there was something at the end and you're wondering what's going to happen next. And then they start running the credits. And it's like, wait a minute. What am I? What? So, you know, there, there you have I, I, I'll, I'll give you my opinion on uh, Civil War after I watch it again. But uh, as far as Dune 2, good. But ending, I mean, it led right up to it. And the ending is like, I'm kind of let down. Mm. I saw a movie, too. It's called The Little Things. Denzel is in it. I think Jason Sudeikis. Um, it's like, it's good, not great. And it's way, it, it, they could have easily cut 30 minutes. It's like two and a half hours, two hours and 35 minutes. They could have easily what cut call? the little things. Oh, okay. and it, yeah. And it's about, it's about a murder, a serial killer, which I'm always into serial killers. Of course you are. Yeah. And, and, and so it's about serial killings. And, I, and so I appreciate that part of it and that aspect of it, but it's not, it could have been a lot better. Anyway, it's decent. The little things. And it's on one of the, uh, I don't know if it's on HBO max or. It's one of those damn premiums. Well, anyway. say, there's another little thing, and, and that's uh, Wally and, and Beaver. Yeah, we're going to get to that here in a second. <laughs> little things. Yeah. Little things for sure. Um, we got to say hi to Justin Darun. He's uh, checking us out. Says, how do, gents? And Karen Boyle says, love the show. Glad I caught you guys live again. Christopher Unruh says, when I joined the broadcast, you all were talking about your old goofy games 18 years ago. On my birthday, I won a game I think was called Spin to Win. Ron would name all this crazy crap. Oh, that was called uh, uh, Catch It and Keep It, I think. Or what? what, what, what well, Catch It and Keep It was when we drop it was still crap crap off the roof. Off the roof yeah. What was the other game where these people, I don't know what he's talking about. He said the caller would say stop. Oh, stop and win. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We'd start naming prizes. We'd say like a $10,000 shopping spree at Mathis Brothers, you know. Two brand new Mustangs from the Ford dealership, and then you go stop, and then we whatever prize we read next is what you get. Yeah, you know, a Kit Kat candy bar. Yeah, that's um, all right. Uh, so it was. I a, love that game. I you know, love that I, game. I, I did too. And 
what, what did they make us quit that? I can't remember. They, they had all kinds of damn problems. I, with everything I with absolutely love that. Damn management. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, all right, the people loved us. The management hated us. Yeah, we said, "Ready, go." Yeah, ten thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he says, oh, sorry, up that and, and that's the contest because he says Ron would name all this crazy stuff. The caller would say, "Stop." And it was always tickets to the Omnidome. Ron, <laughs> Ron would act so excited about the tickets, I can't stop laughing just thinking about it. That's great remembrance there, Christopher. Oh, good stuff. God, the good old days. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. We also did this classic Jack and Ron Leave it to Beaver episodes. Uh, at least our disturbing interpretation of the old TV series Leave it to Beaver. Our episodes always seem to find Beaver's teacher, Miss Landers, attempting to worm her way into stealing Beaver's dad, Ward Cleaver, Away from Beaver's mom, June Cleaver. Mm -hmm. So now here's our slice of that old that's, TV classic that's going on right now. I'm like, yeah. Gee, Dad, I feel kind of creepy. What, 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 what is that? I went to school yesterday, and when I got in my classroom, my teacher, Miss Landers, asked me to stay after class for a private meeting. And when we met, Miss Landers said my grades could be affected by your availability to spend time helping her grade some papers. Well, you know, I always want to make sure that you do the best you can in school, and I'll do whatever I need to do, Beeve. Well, Miss Landers said she's fallen behind on grading papers, and she said you, Dad, are the great, great helper, and she really needs you to come over and help. Miss Landers said my grades could get much better if you'd go over to her house tonight and help grade the papers. Miss Landers said to tell you to scrap your plans for having dinner with Mom and the family. Miss Landers said tell Tell Mom you have a late business meeting and that Mom and me and Wally can go ahead and eat that slop Mom calls the dinner. Miss Landers said she feels sorry for me because I'll probably develop irritable bowel syndrome as I get older from eating that crap Mom calls a meal. Miss Landers said when you come over to her house to grade papers, she wants you to stop off and buy a couple bottles of Pinot Noir, whatever that is. She said to tell you she's making Chateaubriand with grilled asparagus in a red peppercorn sauce and some mini Roma tomatoes with fresh mozzarella. Mo wow, Dad, that sounds good. Mom says she's making tuna helper and ramen noodles. <laughs> Gee, Dad, Miss Landers might be right. I'm going to have bowel problems if I keep eating the slop Mom's making. <laughs> you know, I wonder, too. Mom's home all day with nothing to do, and she can't make something better than that? Well, Mom said she'd been working hard on Brother Wally's ballet outfit for the big recital coming up. Gee, Dad, is our family dysfunctional? <laughs> to the max, B. B, yeah. Uh. Family might be a little dysfunctional in our interpretation of it yeah but boy can you imagine <laughs> during those days though as uh a lot of people were opening up themselves to uh being who they are opening up themselves to their own brand of sexuality and now the world's going crazy oh yeah yeah but back then mm, mm, mm. eric wagner's watching but he claimed he had no audio anybody else have that problem yes yeah, so i was just looking at i was huh. trying to figure out why yeah I think I oh, and Eric goes, there it is. Oh, okay. Oh, and James Heffron said no sound also. Huh. Well. I don't know what that's all about. I don't, I don't know. We've and J and William Wedge said heads up. No it, audio. Okay. It'll be in the final product. <laughs> wow. It will be in the final product. So if you want to spend the extra time watching it again, you'll get it. There How's that? Go. All right. <laughs> we got to go to, hopefully the audio is working now. News of the I'll Be Damned. I heard that. Yeah. Uh, news of the I'll be damned. Let us set the scene. The woods, a campsite, a generous citizen, and a nude woman with an axe. According to the victim, he's been helping a homeless gentleman get back on his feet like and make it back home to Mississippi. <laughs> While checking on the gentleman in a nearby patch of woods, the victim encountered an angry female who was completely nude and armed with an old rusty axe. The woman whom he'd never seen before, raised the axe above her head and began charging him. Fearing for his safety, the victim ran out of the woods. With the woman following him close behind, still armed with the axe, the victim was able to outrun the woman, make it back to his vehicle safely. The woman was last seen walking down a public roadway, still completely nude, buck naked. Where is this at? Well, that's what I'm getting to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> The suspect slipped away unnoticed despite being naked in public. It's a story that might raise eyebrows in parts of the country, but this is Slidell, Louisiana, voodoo country, about 30 miles northeast of New Orleans. The Slidell Police Department was able to identify the female, issued an arrest warrant for aggravated assault and obscenity, her second offense. Yes, it's not the first time the lady's been caught nude running around with an axe. 
Well, there you go. And I believe Ron is familiar with Slidell, Slidell Louisiana, oh, voodoo country. That's when uh, I took my first trip. And unfortunately, I had to take a second one to get back. <laughs> Lake Pontchartrain. Lake, Lake Pontchartrain, that's that, the one they me mentioned. You, there's nothing like driving, and all of a sudden, you look ahead, and you see nothing but water. <laughs> and you turn around, you look behind you, you see nothing the but water. water. Mm. And you're on this two-lane bridge. I've been there. And it's like, oh, my gosh. Now, I saw they had uh, problems with uh, tornadoes and storms and floods and everything else. And they showed this town. I never saw that town. <laughs> but right, you have to remember, it was a long time ago when I when I went there. But I, I never saw this town. I only saw this. Uh, it was a juke joint that was way back in the bushes. But oh, that's, that's, God. Point. Uh, that's scary. But yeah, yeah Slidell, guy was being chased by a nude woman with an axe. And they say, that's very common in Slidell. All right, we got to get to the sleazy train. Well, let me tell you something right now. Roy didn't tell you about this. He may do it next week. We're talking about the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. Ah. Yeah. It'll be rated R. No way. Because it involves the last turtle alive who's out for revenge. It's called The Last Ronin, and it's bloody. I'm excited. Whoa. I read the comic of it. It was Yo, a book yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I, I from Nickelodeon too. This is yeah. from Nickelodeon. And, and I'm saying, wow, what, what, the other turtles are dead. And it's one, real. And there's one turtle. That's left. You you check it out, folks. It's called the Last Ronin. Sounds like the very dark yeah. Ninja Turtle episode. Yeah. Well, you know, wow. they, they they look at some of what what sells. Yeah. <laughs> like, Courtney Kardashian drinks her own breast milk mm. to to keep herself in in the flow. I suppose that's okay. Yeah, I I suppose. Yeah. Anybody ever had any breast milk? Oh, yeah. Aside from you know, I'm a no. fan of it. Yo, you're a fan of yeah. it. Is it is it sweet like they say? Yeah. Really, I've never yeah. had it. I have almond milk. I don't buy it, but when my wife was pregnant, I definitely was partaking. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> let me let me get my mind away from the uh, the, <laughs> the From goat. the tap and outside the tap as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard you, man. The, the goat. <laughs> didn't move. <laughs> I thought you were asleep. <laughs> the, the Golden Bachelor is getting a, a divorce now. They yeah. had, they separated. Uh, After why? three months. Yeah. Uh, and they're, they're getting a divorce because she didn't want to leave her friends, her job, and all that stuff in Didn't New, she know that in the beginning? New I mean, Jersey. Of course. What the hell is it? You know what, do you people? think you're going to convince him to, to leave where he's living, you know, and to go to New Jersey? New yeah. Jersey? Yeah, right. Hey. This is something that could create some controversy. Beyonce's Cowboy Carter album is number one. The uh -oh. single, number one. Reports are Jay-Z spent $20 million to promote her album and to get radio stations to play the single and to play the album. Wow. And I was saying, that's, that's man, aggressive. That's, that's crazy. But until I remembered, wait a minute, $20 million? How much is she going to make? Yeah, that's just, true. Just, that's, that's nothing. Bundles. Yeah. yeah. And finally, uh, wow, Nike is catching it now for uniforms for our athletes at the Olympics. The athletes are saying they are way, way, and let me repeat that, way too skimpy. Oh. So, uh, you know, you'll be able hey, to Hey, but, you know, it's one way to get people to watch the Olympics. That is true. You know? Yeah. And I, did you? That's a new. Uh, well, did you, a, did you a ever star think that they have the, the, the gymnast that I saw a little bit of, and she looks like a, a huskier Simone Biles. Yeah. And everybody's now saying, "Look out, Simone! She's she's coming at you." So we'll see. Well, you know, think about this too. When you talk about the skimpy outfits and what have you, did you ever think for a minute that you would say, you know, twenty years ago, yeah, I think I'll watch uh, women's beach volleyball, not until you saw what they were wearing. And then you couldn't stop watching women's <laughs> beach volleyball. You've seen it, right? Mm -hmm. Th that yeah. is like, why don't we have that here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have women's beach volleyball yeah. right here. I've, I've been to a women's beach volleyball tournament uh, back in uh, uh, yeah. California in Ramo uh, Hermosa Beach. One of those places. Yeah. It's pretty exciting. We got to say hi to uh, Ramon Renteria. Ramon, remember Ramon worked with us at Cumulus Broadcasting? I remember Ramon. I had lunch with Ramon last week. Good guy, man. Mm -hmm. Good guy. I like Ramon. He's 
Uh, he's a big fan of the same team that my granddaughter is a fan of in Monterrey, Mexico. Uh, the Reynos, I think is the name of the soccer team. Anyway. Has he settled down a little bit? You know, Ramon used to be... Uh, he's a little wild. Yeah, yeah. A little rambunctious. Yeah. He's uh, he he kind of he, mellowed out. Yeah, he's kind of mellowed. We had a very, very pleasant little chat. Well, we exchanged pleasantries, had a nice little lunch. It was good to see him, too. All right. Yeah, you, you need to join us next time. A lot right. of fun. Uh, good. I'll get, yeah. Maybe I'll get an invitation next time. <laughs> he, he, <might>. <laughs> <laughs> he, he wrote, Jack even paid for lunch. Yeah, I did buy lunch because he's Whoa, such a good dude. Wait, I wait, like wait, it. Wait, wait, wait. Stop the process. Uh, I mean, he's a good dude. You I like it. You paid for lunch? Yeah, why not? Folks, you may not know this. Jack never pays for lunch. Really? <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. I, 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 I go back to the old, old fellows commercial. Oh, oh, yeah. Because you're a buyer. <laughs> Amy uh, Crossland is also watching today. Hey, Amy, how are you? Amy's one of the best realtors in the entire state of oh, Oklahoma. Oh, Ramon said, define settle down. That's a quick change there. Yeah. Amy Crossland, nice lady, All too. Right. I think you know, Amy. I think you do. Okay, we got to get to some more audio. Here we go. A Chipotle worker in Michigan was shot. Shot in the leg by a customer because of an argument over guacamole. Well, that sounds pretty common. Uh, here are two witnesses talking about the shooting. Listen to this. It was loud, and then we all just ran out because it was, yeah. I mean, wouldn't expect to. Uh, I wasn't really thinking about there was going to be a shot, but there was. I was just eating a bowl, and I heard shouting. The One of the workers went to the back. The customer walked around the counter, tried to grab his food and put it in a bag. And then the employee came back, and they started fighting. And then we heard a gunshot and just ran out as quick as we could. He took his time getting out. He was probably 30 seconds after it. I was in my car, and I saw him just walk out to his car, close the door, and just drive off. Like, he didn't, he didn't speed off or anything. It was, it was weird to see. You know, every time I hear these stories about these uh, fast food operations and somebody as an employee getting shot, arguing over, you know, the cost of a taco or like the guacamole. This guy, yeah, if I'm working at a, a fast food place and the guy says, hey, I didn't get enough of this or I didn't get that or I should have gotten that. I say, you're right here. I mean, why risk your life? For a seven dollar and twenty five cent an hour job, yeah. you know, uh, again, just d give the customer what they want. Depending upon the That's instructions right. they have from their boss, I'm one of the individuals. Well, look, let me go back here and talk to the cook. Yeah, <laughs> and then we'll work, and come back. The, the cook says, "Kiss his butt." <laughs> then then you're going to want to see and, the cook. And, yeah. yeah, and who wants to? Wait a minute. How many people in a restaurant with a weapon? I know. Well, yeah, of course, these are the people going into the restaurant. Yeah. Even though it says no guns allowed, they, don't they go care. in. They don't give a damn. They don't. They've yeah. got that weapon hidden in their belt buckle or whatever. Right. I mean, I just, I'm always amazed when I hear that, um, hear that something like this has taken place at a fast food restaurant, fighting over the cost of a cup of coffee or something. Like, hey, the coffee's a buck and you only have thirty cents. I'll give you two cups. Just you know, I don't need any trouble. I don't need no problems. I got a wife, I got a kid, or whatever it is. Do you really need to start yeah, developing an argument with that, somebody over a bucket of guacamole? Two ways to look at it. No, you don't. But at the same time, you don't want to come off like a punk. <laughs> you got you got you got at one point at some point stand your ground. You got to do that. I, I'm but too, but, don't, but you don't get I'm you too don't much get, of a lover, not a fighter. You don't I get do. rowdy. Is that what you're going to yeah, do? Yeah, you know, you, <laughs> you got some <laughs> You get you got a problem with the taco. You 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 don't lie. I'll give you two free. You know something like that. Very good. All uh, right. We got to get to the dumbass joke of the day. Come on with it. We ready? Okay. Here's the deal. We have three very cheesy jokes. Three, three, one, two, three. Very cheesy jokes, and we call upon Ron to pick one of the cheesy jokes. So once again, Ron gets to pick his cheese. Uh here we go. Number one, the Reverend. Number two, friends on an island. Number three, the bartender. The Reverend, Friends on an Island, the Bartender. What'll it be? Have mercy. <laughs> that, that should let you know. Oh. <laughs> the Reverend. The Reverend. One day, the Reverend of the church is walking, to, walking uh, to a member of his congregations for a visit, going to see somebody from his church. Uh, but he had, it, uh, he had with him a package, and he wanted to mail the package. So he stopped and asked a young boy, where he could find the post office so he could mail the package. Dun, dun, dun. The boy had directed him to the post office. Mm -hmm. The reverend thanked him and said, hey, if you come to my church this evening, you can hear my sermon as I tell everyone how to get to heaven. And the kid said, I think I'll pass 
if you don't even know your way to the post office, how are you going to get me to heaven? Mm. Hey! Ooh. Ouch. Ooh. You want another one? That was a good pastor kid, Yeah. Though. I yeah. thought I was going to go dark. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know yeah. you, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, you know, I think you should uh, uh, challenge your, your preacher, your, your pastor, whatever. Sure. If that's a question you have, yeah, like, ask him. Let him educate don't, you. Yeah, don't walk out of church confused. Here we go. Three friends stranded on a deserted island find a magic lamp. Inside is a genie who agrees to grant each friend one wish. Well, the one friend says, I want to go home. And the genie grants her wish. The next friend says, I want to go home too. The genie grants his wish as well. The other friend, the third one, says, I'm lonely. I sure wish my friends were back here. Damn. Damn. Jeez. <laughs> Do you want one more? Yeah. yeah. This one's a little longer. A man walks into a bar, tells the bartender, give me a double shot of whiskey and give it to me now. Bartender says, sure thing. Is everything okay? Everything all right? Guy says, hell no. I just found out my brother is gay and that he's been secretly in love with my best friend for over five years. Five years. Bartender says, man, that's messed up. So sorry to hear that. A few days later, same guy walks into the bar. He's even more upset. He says, give me a double shot of what I had last time. Bartender says, man. Are you okay? Looks like you're having a rough week. Guy says, oh, God, you don't know. My 19-year-old son just came he came to me and said he's gay. He stole his sister's boyfriend from right under her nose. The house is in complete turmoil. That weekend, the guy comes back, tells the bartender to give him a whole bottle of whiskey. Bartender says, man, more gender trouble at home? Doesn't anyone in your family prefer women? Guy says, yeah, apparently my wife. Ooh. Hey! Oh. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> See, those weren't bad, were they? Yeah, they were. It they weren't right as dark on, as I thought they were going. Yeah, it was right on time. Right on. And time. I think Richard really worries about some of the dark. You stuff were tiptoeing. You were tiptoeing. Yeah, and I, I worry that Richard is like somewhat of our semi-professional censor. He's not. I think Richard likes to stay away from the dark, the nasty, the uh, the down in the gutter. Is that right? Yours be aggressive. No, I, 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 I worry that you, you say, do. You say down in the gutter. He says aggressive. Well, I mean, I think some of the some of the tales we tell, in which are true. Remember story. all the dick stories and the heartening? I was just like cringing over here. Like, see, ah. I, I think he worries about that, and then uh, I people think people love it, though. I know they do. People love it. No doubt about it. Oh, by the way, and by uh, the way, Nancy says those are all pretty good. Well, thank you, Nancy. Yeah. And uh, let's see, Audrey Y. Howard Harris is watching and, and thank you very much for checking us out you should do this every time you get an opportunity very yes. good please share this with everybody you know by the way guys all right we got uh, tri bond well we give you three words you got to come up with one word that works with the three the answer must match ours these are the three words we gave you last week i think so i think richard may have gotten this one or maybe it was maybe you did it, I think it was this one was so easy traffic waffle head traffic waffle head Light? Yeah, nope. You had seven days to think oh, about it. it. Hey, I can tell you, Ron, looking no. at you right now. <laughs> I'll give you the word. It was cone. Traffic cone, waffle cone, head. cone head. Cone head, okay. Yeah, all right. That was a good one. Uh, we got another one for you for today, and then we'll reveal the answer one week from today on April 22nd. All right. Unless we make an, a, a change in our schedule, which we can do because we own the show. Oh. Uh, here we go. Size, factor, Power. Oh, yeah, this one. Oh, this is tough. This is tough. Say it again now. Size, factor, power. Size, factor, power. I was thinking about Richard's going to the phone. I was thinking about strip at first, but I don't I don't think No, that's, that's it. not the word. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, we'll come back in seven days and give you the exact answer. Think about it. You got seven power, days. Power, right? Like power. Yeah. Tool. Like, yeah. Size, factor, power. It's a, I, I, you know, you guys always find them so easy and like to, you know, give me a little crap because they're not that difficult. Well, why are you taking it personal? No, well, <laughs> sometimes it it does get personal. It You're right. Deep for you. All right. All so right. anyway, those are the three, three words. Think about it for next week. All right, we got two tough trivia. We're going to go ahead and put uh, uh, put a wrap on the whole thing. By the way, uh, Eleanor Linskoog is watching. That's my sister in law, oh. my wife's sister. Hey, Al, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Hey, Show's about over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I caught that last joke. Yeah. And it was I awful. Guess I could have waited. Anyway, uh, why 
is there a top 40 for songs? Oh, that's right. I've always wondered that, too. I mean, I never wondered it, but it's always been a top 40 with Casey Kasem and his, yeah. well, we'll count him down from number 30 all the way up to number one. Uh-huh. Casey Kasem in the uh -huh. t American Top 40. You got the juice, right? And when it's good, and like I think, that, I got, if I'm not I got, mistaken, I think Ryan, Ryan Seacrest stole that show from him. And then eventually uh, Casey Ryan, Kasem died. Yeah, well, Ryan Seacrest mm -hmm. stole a lot of shows. Yeah, so Ryan Seacrest. It's a show it's stealer. Talk, yeah, boy. Well, Ryan here's the deal. Well, anyway, go ahead. Uh, there's a Top 40 for songs because jukeboxes in the 50s used to hold exactly 40, 40 records. Wow. Yeah. That's, yeah, they played the records were yeah. you know put in there the forty five <laughs> RPM records in the jukebox. That there were forty. I never knew that. And but so now that's why you have top forty. There you go. Now you know. That's a great answer. Great, great question. Hey, you can take that to the water cooler at work. Now you make Stump. a bet. You can make yeah. a bet. Can make you get a little money off of that. You could. <laughs> I hope you do. Go ahead, take that to work tomorrow. See yeah. what they say. All right, we gotta wrap this thing up, don't we? Got to get out of yeah, here. Yeah, we ran a little over. Right yeah, now. we did. Sorry about and that, know, guys. The folks in charge us. You know, it's free, but if we go over, they charge us. And, and one last question. Was it the audio on the Leave it to Beaver that didn't get out? Yeah, that was it. Ah, yeah. crap. So the people didn't get to hear that. Well, yeah. if you go back and listen to the Leave it the, the show over again, fast forward to the I'll, Leave it to Beaver yeah. segment. I'll answer it. Or, hey, yeah. Or take it and just extrapolate. The leave it to be extrapolate the leave it to beaver episode like and stick it, a, Ron, uh, stick it on a stick it on a private uh a private facebook uh, or private instagram stuff. yeah there you go or stick it on our twitter exactly there you go extrapolate it okay we got to get out of here remember when you go out to do what you do yeah do it like us for god's sakes Why not? you know how we do it go out there be the best at what you do like jack and ron be the damn best you can uh, go out there, give it 110, 120, 130 percent effort. You know, effort just just like us. Go out there, give it hell. Bye bye, everybody. Good day.